Uh, welcome everyone to the uh, Meshery Development Meeting. Today is the 22nd of September. And like every other meeting, Layer 5 meetings, uh, we, uh, we record this meeting and it will be made public. Uh, with that out of the way, uh, we have some newcomers on this call. Uh, uh, we are like, if, uh, for anyone who missed your earlier conversation, uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, I am currently undergraduate student. Uh, I am on my last semester and I am doing a BSc in software engineering. And I mostly worked on uh, ReactJS and I have interest uh, in cloud native technologies. Um, so I'm looking forward to contribute as much as possible. Sounds good. Uh, thanks for introducing PL. Welcome to the community. Oh, thank you. Uh, uh, yeah. So, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Mohammad Jasir Khan. Uh, you can address me by Mohammad. Uh, basically, I'm a uh, computer science undergrad from India. Uh, I mean, junior year uh, and just got across layer five. Uh, contributed to some good first issues and. Uh, looking forward to contribute to Mishiri uh, in near future. Thanks, Jasir. Uh, thanks for the introduction. I think we have one more Mohammed on the call. Uh, Mohammed Mozam, uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Okay. Uh, yeah, you can introduce yourself in the chat, Mosem. Like, uh, no problem. Uh, even if you have don't have a microphone, uh, welcome to the community. It's uh, uh, nice to have you here. Uh, okay, wait, wait. We're really quick before I get confused for everyone else. Good. We've uh, the Mohammeds have arrived. This this is great. <laughs> well, welcome. Um, just for. Uh, to facilitate communication. So, so we have uh, Mohammed Pial. By the way, Mohammed Pial, like you've got a you've got a nice rhyme going on in your last name, like Mohammed Pial Ahmed. <laughs> it's a it's it's a lot of uh -huh, it's a lot of Ahmeds in there. Anyway, so Pial, and then uh, and then Jasser Khan, who just introduced. So you go generally by Mo Mohammed. Mohammed and then Mohammed Mohammed Moazam. You said you go by Mo, or am I getting them confused? Yeah, basically it's Mohammed, uh, but uh, people usually like to uh, call it in uh, form like Mo. Oh, okay. I, yeah, I did get it confused. So, Jasser Khan, you occasionally go by Mo, so that's great. But the other Mohammed without a microphone, do you just go by Mohammed or do you go by? I thought I saw Moa at one point. This is really important for us to, to get this right because, uh, <laughs> yeah, you do. Okay. Is it, do you enunciate that Moa or do you say Mo? Mo or Mo? Ah, oh, wasn't it? Okay, good. Good. All right. I think I'm, I think I'm all clear. Mo, Moa, Pia, good. No one's, there's no Muhammad's here anymore. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. Nice to have everybody. Please, please continue. Yep. Uh, okay. Saptarshi just uh, introduced herself on chat. Uh, would you like to turn on your mic and say hello? Okay, so hello. Hey, yeah, hello. Yeah, I mean, actually, I am a little bit nervous. First time doing. Yeah, no. Uh, most of us are. <laughs> but that you said React JS. That's awesome. Yes, sir. Yeah, there's a. Thank you, sir. Yeah, we have a we have this program in the community called Meshmates, and uh, the Meshmates yes. are individuals that dedicate time to, like, engaging with newcomers as they come in, and so. 
So there's certainly mesh mates for you to engage with, which will be nice, but I have a quick story. There's a mesh mate called, his name's Josh Patel. Uh, he came on to a call just like this, said something really similar to what you just said about a year ago. And he said, yeah, you know, I, I'm focused on React. And about five people jumped on him saying, oh, really? <laughs> There's a bunch of things for you to do over here. Like they were, at the time, there were very few people focused on front end. And there's a lot of front end things to do. So, so kudos to you for uh, being React focused. There's a lot of stuff that goes on with React. Yeah, cool. Thanks well, a lot, sir. Yeah. Yeah, welcome. Is there anyone else uh, who is new on this call? Uh, uh, Sekiranda Hamsa, uh, did you get a chance to introduce yourself? Uh, if you have. If you have issues uh, with your audio, you can uh, jump in on chat and introduce yourself. All right, uh, welcome everyone, uh, all newcomers. Uh, so let's get started with the uh, today's agendas. And uh, uh, the first topic is about a uh, new meeting or more like uh, uh, restructuring uh, an existing meeting. So we, we, we usually have uh, bi-weekly calls for uh, uh, initiatives and continuous integration in Meshery. So the, it is the Meshery CI call. So we are kind of restructuring it to be the Meshery build and release meeting. So the uh, scope of the meeting is to uh, ensure that uh, we test out Meshery and make sure that Meshery is ready for uh, a new release. We are at v, v, uh, 0.5 right now. So we are uh, almost halfway there or exactly halfway there to, to go to a, a 1.0 release. So uh, we have to ensure uh, quality and uh, quality when we uh, make a new uh, release of Meshery. So the upcoming release is v0.6 and uh, it will be out in a couple of weeks. So uh, one of our goal, goals in this meeting is to test out Meshery. So uh, if you look at the meeting minutes, uh, you will find a link to the Meshery test plan. So what this uh, basically is, is a, is a series of uh, tests or uh, complete use cases of Meshery uh, that tries to touch all, all of Meshery's components. And uh, why we have it written down here is, is to make sure that uh, the functionalities mentioned here uh, actually work, uh, work across all platforms, uh, all uh, operating systems. And uh, to also make sure that the user experience uh, while they are running through these uh, uh, steps as uh, actually good and intuitive. We, we, we also need to uh, check, check whether we have documentation for all these commands, uh, uh, I mean commands and uh, actions. Uh, that is the basic purpose of this document. So how this is going to work is, uh, people can uh, take up a particular area or a particular component or a particular test group, and, uh, test out uh, these uh, actions mentioned here and uh, write down their observations. So uh, we can have people uh, sign, up, uh, sign up to test out these particular areas. Uh, uh, and then other thing I wanted to mention uh, was, uh, on the measure testing strategy. So as we as we walk through uh, walk through these tests, most of which are a manual right now. One of the other goals of this meeting is to uh, is to make sure that we are uh, 
we are progressing uh, towards automating these as uh, unit tests and integration tests. So essentially what we want in the future is uh, to make all of these, uh, uh, all of these test cases uh, automated and uh, uh, hopefully trigger them in the build and release or the, in the, in the CI CD pipelines. So the action item here right now is, is for people to sign up to test out these particular areas. The, what we are looking for is uh, people who are uh, actually, uh, people who have actually worked with uh, Meshery, uh, who has uh, sufficient understanding to carry out these tests and uh, to uh, write, uh, uh, write good reports on uh, what is actually happening versus what is the expected outcome and to raise issues and uh, go and going and fix fixing them. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, uh, Lee, would you like to add something here? Briefly, I'll say that um, this is an excellent opportunity for Piyush, actually, um, with respect to Meshery CTL. Piyush has already been doing most of what these line items are. Um, and so, um, Piyush, this is a, it's a nice, it's, nice it's, it's an excellent opportunity to lead the way. Um, there are right now a couple hundred lines in the spreadsheet. Um, eventually, we'll want to automate every single one of these. Before we do, um, there's some amount of human checking that's, well, one, we don't have the automation today. Um, it's not necessarily difficult to get to automation. It's difficult to get to um, sustainable automation, a framework that is easy to keep up to date as either Meshery CTL changes or Meshery changes. So automation isn't the immediate goal for the upcoming release. There are kind of two things that are the immediate goal for the upcoming release. One is to make sure that functionally the, well, that the feature works. Two, that, that it behaves in the right way, that it provides, and this is something that only a human can really look at, like it provides the right feedback um, that like thinking of Meshery CTL specifically, that it should give people example usages. Um, it should not just bark at them that they're missing a required parameter. It should say specifically this parameter and, <clears throat> and here's an example. And so that's one thing. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna call out, call out Piyush. And I'll also say there are a couple, uh, and I don't, maybe Navendu just said this, but there's a couple of overarching integration tests that, that are being run. There's a handful of them that are being run every time that a pull request is made to the repository. In addition to that, it's, e it's straightforward enough to take recently written GitHub actions, GitHub actions that have been written for Meshery specifically. There are two. It's easy enough. It's very straightforward to take both of those actions and schedule them for to, to run like on a nightly basis. Uh, and those GitHub actions broad, they are significant unit uh, integration tests. They um, like I don't know. They'll, they'll run the full gamut of like deploy, uh, bringing up a cluster, deploying meshery, bringing up a mesh, deploying a sample app, testing. You know, running a performance test on it for performance management. That's that's not the that's not all that you can do. That's not all of the features of the performance management area, but it's a lot, and it's the core set of functionality. So when we get things like that scheduled, a couple of overarching integration tests will immediately provide automation to flex a lot of the code. So one of those I know is on Rude Rocks's plate for scheduling the service mesh performance GitHub action. The other one for SMI conformance, I don't know that that's on anyone's plate. So. I'll take a note in the meeting minutes and um, it could be a good opportunity for someone who is 
uh, DevOps oriented or build and release oriented. So, yeah, that's good. It's good to recast that meeting. Um, quality is not something that we can afford to skimp on any longer. Meshery right now is in its dot five release. That means it's over the over the hill. It's like it's it's just going to go over the hump and got, starts to go like down the hill toward 1.0, toward people and organizations wanting to use Meshery and all of its capabilities in production. I think a user just asked on Friday. Well, actually, I know I got two questions last week about people, examples of people using Meshery in production. If people are going to use Meshery in production, there should be a lot of tests to code. So, so good. So it's, it's we're, we're sort of shifting focus of that meeting right at the right time. We're doing so just in advance of making the next dot six release, which we've only got a couple of weeks left on. So moving post haste here is necessary. What time is the meeting at tomorrow? It's, um, it's about four hours later than now, I think, or five, four hours. Yeah, uh, four hours later than today's call. Uh, 12 p.m. Central Time, 11.30 IST. Uh, we also have, we are also thinking to uh, shift the timing of the meeting to some time uh, earlier. So uh, this week it will be this time and maybe we can uh, reschedule the meeting uh, in the coming weeks to better suit, uh, uh, to make it a bit early. Uh, all right, uh, the meeting details uh, is in the layer five community calendar and the meeting minutes is available on the, uh, on the meeting minutes. Uh, all right. Uh, moving on to the next topic. Uh, Shreyas, uh, would you like to talk about the Nginx adapter? Uh, yes, just a second. Yeah, sure. Uh, stress you are on mute. Okay. okay, assuming the right screen is sharing. So, thanks to Jared and Rudrax, now we can uh, install Nginx uh, service mesh through Helm. I have meshery running on Kubernetes right now. So, every adapter is assigned a TCP port and Engine access in this. So every operation you do in the life cycle is sent to uh, the adapter over the RPC request and it's adapter's responsibility to execute those operations. For example, right now, installing through it's taking some time. For example, we have Nginx service mesh installed, installing sample applications like all these and applying service mesh configuration like adding, enabling the Istio sidecar, uh, sorry, uh, automatic sidecar injection. Currently, we have uh, some error doing that in Nginx. As you can see this. Well, so Shreyas, the 
by the way, it, did you end up? If, did you end up having? If you have conversations with Jared and uh, Rude Rocks or others about like a question that you raise in Slack, try to have those conversations publicly so that all can um, stay abreast of what's going on. Did, did you guys converse publicly, and I just missed it? No. Or? no. Okay. No, no, yeah, yeah. No. Please, please do because it, it's um, that. That actually is a good reminder for everyone. Like, it's really, you're. It's really easy to go have private direct messages, would, but like, stop, stop, don't do it. I challenge you all to have public conversations. Um, you're gonna really miss out on being able to collaborate with others, learn from others. You'll do duplicative work, which I think might have just happened. I'm not sure. I just raised a PR on the Nginx repo, um, Shreyas about converting from V1 beta one to V1, which I assume is what you guys have done. Is that right? Uh, yes, I'm not sure I get what you're saying. I'm sorry, did you, what did you, what was the fix for what you guys did? Nothing, I haven't done anything. So, okay, well then how is this working now? Like what, what did you and Jared and Rudrox change? Uh, okay, so Jared and Rudraksh added the uh, ability to download the uh, uh, service mesh from Helm. So I was talking about that. Okay, weren't you installing from Helm previously, though? No, we weren't installing. I guess. No, no, no. The the adapter itself. When you run the mesh adapter for Nginx, and you tell it to install a service mesh. Um, was yes. it installing from Helm or was it installing from something else? I guess it's installing from something else. And uh, I guess two, three weeks ago, Rudraksh uh, made a PR to install from Helm. Okay. So, hey, Rudraksh, if you can hear me on the phone now, the, can you recap the change that was just made to the Nginx uh, adapter, the mesh adapter for Nginx? Um, it's the recent change. I hope I'm yeah. audible and my audio is not yep. breaking or something. So just the recent change was about uh, normalization. Basically, Nginx recently overrode the Helm charts and the version in the Helm charts, like previously it contained a VN, now it didn't. So the function that was present before a PR was merged, it stopped working. But I did send a fix for it last week, so I guess it's at work. Okay, it the means. fix was sent. The fix was sent to the Nginx service mesh. Uh, no, the adapter. Okay. And so, okay, so pre. Uh, yeah, to recap, like previously, what was the adapter? What me what mechanics was the adapter using to deploy the Nginx service mesh? Oh, like a lot of time ago, it was actually using Nginx, the Nginx SM CLI, which had some, I don't know, it had some yep. Uh, yep. ULA issues and that, that was a blockade to us and we couldn't get Nginx mesh out of beta, the adapter out of beta. And then recently, we had Jared joining us in the community, and he informed us that you can install Nginx using Helm charts now. So we moved to Helm charts instead, and now Nginx SM is installed using Helm charts. And and the PR that was talking about uh, before this was just a fix. So yeah, I didn't know which point of history we'll be talking about. Cool. Yeah. So I get that 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 we have recent in the most recent past updated the mesh adapter for Nginx service mesh to install that service mesh using their Helm chart. Great. The, <laughs> but yesterday, Shreyas pointed out that there were some errors while installing and those errors um, appeared to be, you know, the fact that their Helm chart is using deprecated API versions. So it doesn't support one dot Kubernetes one two two. They're using an old, you know, V one beta one of uh, oh, the okay. mutating. So 
So of the chain of the interactions that, so Shreyas, I'm still trying to like extract what you guys figured out yesterday. Like what, how is this working now from the challenge that you were facing yesterday? No, no, actually we haven't uh, talked about that uh, problem uh, right now. So. Oh, okay, okay, cool. Then I, then I think I was confused from the start that great. Oh, okay. I'm so, sorry, I'm sorry. So cool. Oh, okay. Yep. So you're still seeing the, okay, great. Yeah, I was confused as to what we were doing. So you're still seeing the air up there. Nice. Good. So by the way, for everyone else on the call, just the, every meshery adapter, um, you know, there's a reason why there's an adapter for every service mesh. Every service mesh is unique and provides and runs differently and wants to be installed differently. I have to say that I hope, I wish Jared was on because it's better. It's nicer to, um, give critical feedback when they're, they're on. But I have to say like the Nginx adapter, the Helm install takes for friggin' ever. It uh, actually wouldn't uninstall in my cluster. I couldn't get that their namespace deleted. I had to wipe my cluster. And so, yeah, Shreyas, I think that, are you seeing a long time to install with Helm as well? Uh, yes, with Nginx, yes. Okay. I mean, not, I, yeah, I, don't, so they're, they're, I think, you know, they're in part like deploying Spire they're actually deploying a few things like, you know, um, Jaeger and Prometheus, um, Spire, which is pretty cool. They're using S they're, they're fully using service mesh interface, the, that spec and a set of specs. They've got a rate limiter CRD, uh, and I think a circuit breaking CRD. So those are really cool things. Um, but it does take forever to install and actually uninstalling. I couldn't get it to uninstall. So the error that you're seeing right there with the validating webhook configuration being deprecated in 160, um, I just sent in a PR just before this call started. Uh, and the link is in the chat. I'll put it up again. It's not a very big PR. It just switches off of V1 beta one for webhook configurations to V1 instead of V1 beta one V1 because that API version was deprecated in Kubernetes 1.22. If you do a kubectl version on your system, what version of Kubernetes are you running? I'm assuming it's 1.22 or later. Uh, I'm running uh, 1.20.7. Uh, okay. Okay, you're explicitly um, calling that one out to run. Nice. So those, those are just warning messages that you're seeing then. Okay, cool. And th those are not preventing you from running the. Okay. And then do you see Nginx in, um, um, do you happen to see Nginx uh, on the uh, dashboard in Meshery now that it's provisioned? No, no, not yet, no. Okay. Okay, sounds, sounds like we need to open an issue to make sure that that's happening. You mean right. Nginx missing detecting Nginx? Is, is that what we're talking about here or just yeah. the adaptive chip? Yeah, about, more about mesh. I'm about oh. mesh sync detect. And I'm pretty sure mesh sync is detecting it, but we're not displaying it in the UI. Okay. Cool. I'm sorry to have interrupted so much, Shreyas. I got, I got miss, I got all confused when you first started. So, this is a great overview. This is great. Okay. So that's it. Then also uh, adding the sidecar injection. There's also an error there. So. Yeah, actually, there is an open issue for that. And I don't know who's working on it. So maybe I'll take it. Yeah, probably Jared was supposed to work on it, but then he's wearing the release manager hat probably now. So yeah, feel free to. Uh, any other comments here?
Rudraksh, are you able to talk about moving Night Talk out of misery? Yeah, I hope the demo works. <laughs> So basically, yeah, this is about getting Nighthawk out of Misery's container. There are two steps to this. I mean, it's actually one, but we are having two steps. Basically, Nighthawk should run in a separate container, not in Misery service, Misery service container. And in all load generators should run out of mystery's container and in a separate low uh, mystery perf container so this is more targeted towards step one now and i've got everything up and running already and i've not deployed this using mystery ctl because the thing with mystery ctl is it would fetch those manifests on the fly so it's just a Bash script which applies those manifest and deploys machinery. And yeah, so right now I just deleted them. And then it builds and sends it to my cluster. And then we'll have this machinery server running with the mystery perf container which would be actually deployed by mystery ctl but like the thing i stated just before this so good everything is there in a running state i got to do a little thing to So now I can go here and put up a URL. And let me also pull up logs from the service. So a Nighthawk service is running in this mystery perf container the grpc service and it's listening on this port and now i'll create a test and you can see that it's sending that event and this service actually running in the mesh repo of containers is receiving test configuration and we have we have the graph so yeah basically this pull request that is here right now it it does a few things it makes sure that nighthawk i mean the mystery perf container gets started with the nighthawk service running when you run mystery ctl system start and then when you actually try to do a load test using nighthawk Message server will reach out to Nighthawk and then it will connect and do the load test to so basically moving the Nighthawk service out of the container. Also, there is this Nighthawk output transformer. It's it's still in Mystery's container, but there was a PR for that. Uh, which which adds the ability to natively convert the output produced by Nighthawk to Folk to compatible output, which is used for uh, making this histogram. But I'm still not using it on this right now because it's actually not released. And two, I'm having uh, second thoughts on actually using this because uh, our staff, Auto and the staff, one of the maintainers of Nighthawk, had made this comment on this pull request that we can 
if we can use the night talk transformer binary we should use that because it would have less maintainability and yeah i agree with him but we still we should observe in this case like before reaching a conclusion so i guess for now we can try with this as well this would just need a release and if it doesn't work out good we can probably revert it so yeah you use basically about it using nighthox transform like isn't there a bug in there that doesn't support um fortio compatible output yeah actually they were uh, so the code which which the mystery server that i have deployed on my system right now is basically the old version of this like before this pull request was merged if you would see then that is actually what it was and doing some hacks because the output transformer the resulted returns is not uh, not in uh, what do you call that in not aligns with folk to in the best terms like there are some differences so if you don't use the nighthawk output transformer at all and do it natively we won't actually have that we won't actually have to put that hack because it will be taken care of by the golang wrapper itself so yeah yes. so i mean so auto has a good suggestion the problem is is their output nighthawk's output transformer doesn't support the format that we need correct which is basically yes. the same question i just asked yes good. yeah yes it doesn't so no, no we can't use it and that's a great opportunity to request that auto have that have it be compatible and then and then there isn't a reason for us to use a different transform yeah makes sense okay cool yeah please please do you know suggest that to him like yeah we don't we don't want to do duplicative things cool good mm -hmm. all right so um by the way i think you were were you were just trying to highlight to everyone that you've done some work to be able to take what is currently a built-in a load generator that ships inside the same container as meshery server does you were just showing that you can pull that out and run it in a separate container right yep nice good and that'll set us up for distributed performance testing so that'll be super interesting it'll be really neat um, along with this, as a related um, enhancement, did you tell everyone about the reduction in image size? <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't. Um, okay, so be quick if be quick if you can. So we only have twenty minutes left. So. Oh, just just so, read. I won't open the pull request, but yeah, just give the brief update that we were using a pretty heavy image, like we were using a one to image. We were we thought that it has all the libraries that are needed. Basically, Nighthawk binaries are static, not statically compiled like Go binaries, so they need some sort of shared libraries in order to work out of the box, and that that led us to having a larger image. But then we realized we could use a smaller image which one one with comes with alpine and glipsy and nighthawk would be satisfied with those shared libraries so we recently moved to that image and also the binaries that were compiled and placed and released at get nighthawk they need to be investigated like i also inquired with auto on this the binaries released on get nighthawk repo are quite Big. they were actually 600 mb in size and the ones that we have in the container it's pretty small it's it's stripped and it's nearly 30 mbs so we also removed those binaries and instead placed the other binaries like the 30 mb binaries in the docker container in mystery service docker container so that it works and yeah that that helps us to reduce the image size to one by ten. So, yeah, that's the update. So, anybody have questions for Rudraksh? Anybody? 
So if you, by the way, if, if those that looked at slide two, like I had linked in the chat, um, you'll note that Meshery supports three load generators and each of those three are shipped inside the same server, um, sorry, the same container image today. And so Brew Rocks is showing that, that can, the, those can be pulled out and put into their own image, which would base their own container, which would basically become very similar to an adapter. Meshery would treat them like an adapter. Um, and that will enable Meshery to run N number of load generators so that it can really do an intense and a high fidelity uh, performance analysis. So that's cool. It's great. All right, next topic. Uh, Rudrax, like, do you want to talk about the uh, EKS configuration? In Meshery CTL, or uh, Husayna, like if you could provide some insights for Rudraksh. So, yeah, it's let me just you know what this is going to be. This will kill me. But I, let me uh, let me help here to be more concise, and that is to say. Um, people are trying to deploy Meshery into EKS, AWS's Elastic Kubernetes Service. EKS, like other AWS services, wants, to, wants people to use IAM um, as a method of authentication. Meshery today uh, leans into use of kubeconfig and the context and certificate data inside of kubeconfig to authenticate between Meshery and Cube API. EKS doesn't like that. It wants um, additional, it wants some additional things. There are a couple of ways to achieve the type of authentication that EKS is looking for that AWS mandates. None of them are necessarily easy upfront or long-term sustainable things. So one of those includes bundling AWS's CLI into the Meshery server container, which is exactly what Rudrox just got done showing that we're trying not to do anymore. Um, we're trying to get away from those things. And this has long been on Husayna's agenda to get us off of uh, those dependencies. So Husayna, Rudrox has done um, a fair bit of work and investigation here that actually, that frankly, like will take way too long to explain on the call. But um, if we can, it's time to hand that off to you to let you kind of go through it and just you know come back to like identify or suggest which route we might take and it's actually too too deep probably to go into here rude rocks does that capture it yep. oh it's uh one part i believe that we are tackling here right uh, lee which is uh, credentials part and there are uh, uh, the existing config commands uh, they also read some uh, uh, other parameters for eks so everything has to eventually move to uh, aws uh, sdk <laughs> Um, you got you. And Hussein, there's an EKS CTO that it's probably worth doing some diligence on to understand if, if that utility has made this use case any easier. M maybe it has, maybe it hasn't. Oh, yes. Yeah. A single command, right? Instead of the script. Correct. Yep, yep, but but even more than that, um, not using a command, not using a binary, but but like to your point, using an SDK. So either AWS's SDK or like a Go client of EKS CTL, which is a project from Weave. 
yeah when i came across that single command i tried to find out the sdk but uh, there was not much uh, documentation or any uh, any of that implemented uh, i can take a look now again Okay, it might be a red herring, but it's just worth noting. Yes. That's fantastic. Good, okay, cool, uh, great. Oh. Uh, yep, uh, let's uh, move on to the next topic. Uh, uh, Hussein uh, will follow up with Rudraksh here. Uh, Darren is has joined, I think. Yes, uh, Darren. Yep, I'm here. Yep. Would you like to talk about the updates to the Helm chat? Yeah. Um, can I share my screen? Uh, yeah, sure, sure. How? Okay. So the PR here, it's just basically a follow up of the of the Hamshot worsening bug that I fixed last Friday. And like during fixing that bug, I realized that, you know, um, the ham chart is missing something. That's why the broker and the mesh sync parts are not coming up after using the uh, ham charge to do the machinery installation. And then this PI is to fix that. Besides that, I also noticed that um, the, let, let's go to this issue so that I can explain it a bit easier. Um, yeah, so as you can see here, these are all the parts, you know, that get installed after using the ham chart with the fix. And then this is how we, how everything looks like with mastery CTL and the mastery part, broker part and the um, mastery mesh sync are missing from the ham chart. Besides that, we can see that here, you know, the operator, mastery operator has two container. One is the manager, the other one is the RBAC, uh, group RBAC proxy uh, container. While, you know, the ham chart only has the the manager container did I no I didn't really list out here but I do have the uh, I do have the actual cluster so what it looks like is that we only have the manager here we didn't have the quick proxy so the PR that I have is to fix that as well so there are like two issues you know the missing container and then the missing uh, CRs for the for the broker and mesh sync. So that's what the PR does. Uh, I don't know why I cannot re-click that tab. Uh, I'm not really sure why I cannot switch tab for that. Oh, now I can. So the way that I did was that I make uh, two, I created two folder, one called a uh, mastery broker. And then the other one called mastery uh, mesh sync. What these two folder has is basically just the uh, CR instance. So this is the template. So basically just a CR instance of the mesh sync and then the broker. You can see that here is the mesh sync as a kind and then the broker as another kind, you know. So the users can basically do a ham install with these two ham charts to install the actual instance for the uh, for the broker and the mesh sync. And I can actually show you in my cluster, you know, about how it works. So on the left, you can see here, I have all the other parts that gets installed with my with the most updated ham chart. So that's the command I basically ran, you know, and then I get the system like this on the left. And then one thing I wanted to show is the operator. And now it has the group RBAC proxy container as well as the manager in the same part. And then if I, you know, can show you the logs, it seems it it is doing what it's supposed to be doing. I compare the logs with the, the mastery CTL uh also this guy but 
you can see here the match the the manager is not doing anything after starting the controllers and the workers because we don't really have the CR instance for the broker and match sync so that you know the reconciling for like the reconcile functions for both two resources are not getting triggered but if now I do the ham install uh go to let's call this broker go to the CR ham chart Kubernetes ham mastery CR mastery broker and then in namespace mastery it will well as soon as I did that we can see here oh the you know the the, op the operator is able to pick up this resource and then start to reconcile the broker and if I go back to the uh, cluster we can see here we have a mastery broker zero that gets you know it's getting created here in the cluster it's still trying to set up everything it's supposed to be doing and then it's the same for the uh, basically same process for the mesh sync uh, so let's see and then Basically, the same process. We deploy the mesh sync with the same process, and then we can see here with mesh sync um, part here. And then if I go check the operator manager, we can see here is also reconciling the uh, mesh sync CR. That's basically what this uh, PR is about. But I did notice there are some difference between the existing. PR and the well, not the PR, the existing uh, operator YAML manifest and the one that we that we use in the mastery CTL. For example, the ports here, we only have a port called you know one thousand. That's for the HTTP. But on the other hand, the one that we use for the mastery CTL, we have a two ports. One is that. 9443, that's for the server, and then that the other is 8080, that's for the matrix. But we don't have that in the in the operator ham charts. So I was wondering, you know, if we if I should update this so that it it is consistent with the one that we have in the what that we use in the uh the mastery CTO. That's basically everything that I have to say for the PI, I guess. Did I explain this yeah, clearly? Darren, this is great. Actually, the way that you presented it was very nice because it, it falls right in line with the way that we commonly present on these calls, which is uh, an acknowledgement that most of us are learning. <laughs> oh, okay. So, and, yeah. So, if that is the case, I would like to cover like one more thing. Yeah. So... So yeah, so the reason that I have these two resources uh, installed after, after this uh, mastery installation is because that, uh, so with this, the, like with the ham charts under ham slash mastery, we have a thing called the crds.yaml in which we actually define like two customer resource. One is called broker dot, you know, mastery.layer.io, layer5.io, and the other one is a mesh sync. So for those for those of you who don't, who are not really familiar with that, like what the CRD is, a CRD is just basically a uh, an extension of Kubernetes API. It's like uh, the Kubernetes, they provide a way for us developers to create our own object. So as you may know that there are different objects in the uh, Kubernetes, right? For example, deployment, that's like the, one of the building CRD. So, so we use this, this uh, mechanism to create our own uh, custom resource definition. But one thing to know is that this, so what, so what we're seeing here, just a definition, it just the, you know, it, it's like the objects, you have the, all the fields inside, right? But you don't actually have the objects until you, until you put things inside. So now after the first step, we only have the definition for the objects. So that's why we didn't see, you know, the broker part and the matching part until we actually do the installation. 
So that's why we need another step or steps to do the installation for the broker and the mesh sync so that they have the, uh, so, so that we have the parts in the clusters. And then if you actually take a look at the, uh, the broker and the mesh sync uh, ham chart that I created, they have a kind called mesh sync. This is not building object. That's the one that we defined in the CRD. And then same for the broker is called a uh, broker, you know, that's what we define in the CRD. That's all I have to add, Lee. Cool, good, yeah, thanks for that. Uh, a couple of couple of items. Um, um, yep, so my understanding is that the, we probably want to be consistent with mesh CTLs use of those ports. Mm -hmm. I have to go, to go back and check, but um, certainly the deployment of mesh operator from mesh CTL, it um, works well outside of the CRs themselves, which is in part what you're addressing. To your right. point, like, we do want to set aside the manifest as un not the desired way to deploy. You know, we want to whole hog both in mesh CTL, uh, the way that it deploys, we want for it to use Helm, um, which it, yeah, we want for it to use Helm for all of Meshri's components. We want for Meshri, there are use cases where Meshri server will also need to deploy the operator. And so it would use Helm as well. Um, and then mm -hmm. in just supporting the deployment of Meshri itself, like as people go to initially deploy Meshri that they could use Helm to deploy Meshri and all of Meshri's components. So that's right. really great. There's a couple of objectives that we try to you know, it's like like these objectives that are written here that we try to hold true, which is um, as few you know, few commands as possible. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so having so there's a couple as you dig in here. This is this is fantastic, um, Darren. Like as you dig in here, there's a couple of things maybe to plant as seeds in the back of your mind. Like so, one is that yeah, I mean, like it, like last time we spoke, I was I thought we were using operator SDK, but if you're seeing Cube Builder stuff, then like okay, I guess we switch that and we're using Cube Builder. Um, as you dig in, like there's a, a leader election that seems to be going on, like for nothing. Uh, like like we like one of the potential future enhancements to the operator is the ability to be HA in nature, or you know highly available and and have multiple a leader. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know what the terminology there is a leader slash um, non-leader. <laughs> I'm trying mm -hmm. not to say. Trying not to say. Anyway, um, th there's also um, so in I don't know in Meshery's UI. Next time you're in there, there's the the settings area. You can go and there's a switch to, you can flip back and forth to deploy or undeploy an operator from a cluster. Mm -hmm. um, the, like one of the things that, um, is that we're struggling to find the balance between and something for you to digest and sort of think about as you spend time here is, you know, the, like the, the, we're, we have, we're having faith that there's going to be value in the operator caring and feeding for those two custom controllers that the broker one and mesh sync. And now that we're correcting the fact that those CRs will be present and the operator can do its reconciliation job, you know, ongoing, mm -hmm. great. Um, we'll probably, once we get to like a highly available setup, we'll probably find more value in the operator. There's an open PR that on Meshery to support many Kubernetes clusters Right now, the architecture of Meshery is such that um, is lined up to support many clusters, but it really, right now in the current release, Meshery only supports talking to a single cluster at a time. So while you might take an operator and deploy it on any number of clusters, um, and, right. and those operators can be reporting it, those mesh syncs can be all like sending in info, Meshery server would really only be letting you interact with you know, one at a time. And that, that's changing here very shortly. There's an open PR that's, that might be of interest to you actually. But the reason I'm bringing it up because in context of the operator and the operator's job is like, well, hopefully 
instead of taking the easy route of just dealing with deploying those two individual custom controllers and letting mesh server in some respects be the operator, quote unquote, mm -hmm. you know, um, the hope is that long-term we, we find that, oh yeah, like going that path and investing into an operator uh, pays off. And so just things to, like in some respects for the end user, hopefully they can deal with the, the atomic unit of the operator, sort of like speak in those terms and to them, to most people who are using Meshery, to them, the operator and NATS and mesh sync is just sort of like, is just the operator. Like they, they don't, I see, it goes I see. under. So you want, so the end goal of that is to want to basically, uh, after we deploy, well, so but actually in short, we want to do everything in one command, right? So the flow is that we want to do, you know, ham, well, either ham or mastery CTL, we want to do, Let's say, let's take the HAM, for example, we do, you know, HAM install and then the path to this, you know, basically this, the first command here, and then we do this. And then after the operator uh, is created in a cluster, and then as well as we have the CRDs, the operator will start to create the CR instance for the broker and, and then the mesh sync. But it does. But the order here doesn't really matter because they're two independent resources, and then, and then the operator will start reconciling for both resources. Am I understanding that correctly? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll characterize two other, two other behaviors that we desire for. Like, yeah, to your point about single command install is like if right. you do Meshri CTL system start, it it'll it it um. Let me. I'll describe it as this that like. We want for Meshery server and Meshery CTL to greedily, if, if I can use it this way, like greedily um, deploy Meshery operator as soon as a user connects Meshery to a cluster. Because getting mesh sync, mesh sync is really the heart of Meshery, like in terms of it, it uh -huh. discovers, all, it pumps a bunch of blood, if you will, a bunch of info to the various components so that they mm -hmm. know what's going on and can take action in the right way. And so getting mesh sync up as early in that deployment process as possible lends to a, ver a quick time to value for users. They sort of um, bring up Meshery's UI and it's like, oh, wow, like it already knows all these things. And, and so immediately they can start to, you know, you, you know so okay. it's just... I see. Yeah, I do think that, like, if for not, the open PR on multi cluster support might tickle your noodle with respect to, well, well, like, well, what happens when there's ten meshery operators or ten mesh syncs and they're all reporting in? How is meshery server differentiating between? You know, like. Um, there's some some juicy things to think about. Yeah. Mm. Okay. But uh, but yeah. Anyway, th those are big big lofty things. But like sort of here and now, things are something I'd be curious to. So thanks for the education, by the way, on the um, Kubernetes RBAC proxy or, or Cube RBAC proxy. I I come to understand that it's you know something of a more or less like side card next to the uh, yeah, just a sidecar container. And, um, but as you think about this more deeply, like part of my questions are, well, hey, what, what value have we yet to derive from using, from having an operator? Like, like what, what are we, because like, what are we missing? And, and uh, again, like this, these are just things to think about. It's like people will, um, if mesh sync isn't running and report and isn't communicating to mesh server, <clears throat> You can still use like a portion of Meshery's functionality, mm -hmm. but more and more and more, like it becomes really painful if you don't have one. If Mesh Sync isn't connected, so if there's certain reconciliation loops or or robust or um, there's more robustness that we can get from the operator, you know, the better. Mm. Yeah, this is great. You can tell I'm excited. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm just thinking that I'm not really sure if I have seen a pattern that the operator is in charge of the resource deployment because you know all the either all the projects I work on or the open source project that I have seen people learn is that they do it separately because they are too independent things, right? The, the operator is not supposed to um, handle the creation of the customer resource. Only the main job of that is to reconcile the, the resource that you are, well, that you want it to reconcile, right? It's like it, it watches that object, but in terms of deployment, I guess we can, well, there must be a way to do it, you know, if we really want to do it, but I'm not really sure if that is a good, you know, idea, yeah. to be honest. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah I need yeah. to read more about that, maybe. You're probably right. Like, hey, if there's a convention and like, like in some respects, if you, if we did change that behavior, it would almost be like a self-propagating virus and in some respects. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Um, so I took us over time. I wanted to make oh. sure to give. So sorry about that. I'm the venue, but uh, Darren, uh, Darren, this is this is great. It's good. Thank you. I should probably stop sharing my screen now. Yep. Uh, uh, does anyone else have anything else to discuss before we wind up? Uh, we missed a couple of topics today because some folks were not able to join today. Uh, but uh, I think we covered everything that we set out to discuss. Uh, uh, just to remind, we will have a, a build and release, measure build and release meeting tomorrow. Uh, you can see the details in the layer five community calendar. So join if you are interested in uh, uh, testing it out and uh, taking being a part of that initiative. Uh, so, all right, everyone. Uh, see you next week. Thanks all. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone.